Hey guys, I'm glad that you're here because I'm gonna share with you the 10 money lessons that I wish I would have learned sooner. And I started thinking back to just how I grew up and I don't know if you're anything like me, but we did not grow up talking about money in our home at all. And I remember when I went to college, I just didn't know anything about money or saving or budgeting or, you know, I didn't understand like, how do people get rich? I just thought it was, I didn't know. And I remember back in college, I remember I used to think that whatever money I had in my bank account, that's just, I could just spend, that's what I had to spend. And it wasn't until I got a little older and wiser and I started to understand some things about money that helped me get to where I'm at now. And you know, now I've built multi-million dollar online companies, but it didn't start that way. And I have been, $170,000 in student loan debt. I have racked up an embarrassing amount of credit card debt before in my life, and I don't ever wanna make those mistakes again, but I learned a lot from those mistakes. And I wanna share with you guys the 10 things that I wish I would've known sooner, and hopefully these will be helpful for you as well. So as we're going along, if you have anything to add, put it in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure you ring the bell, subscribe, and this is gonna be a lot of fun. And it's interesting, I've done a lot of studies on shame. And what's interesting is I found that there's actually like a list of the top shame triggers for most people. You wanna guess what the number one shame trigger for women is? Typically it's body image. The number one shame trigger for men typically is around money and providing. And it's just an interesting fact and stat that I noticed, but that doesn't mean that those are universal just to men and women. But I found that a lot of people carry a lot of shame around money. And these are things that I just wish we would have talked more candidly about as I was growing up, because it would have just helped me see results faster if I would have known these 10 things that I now know but took me a lot of mistakes to figure out. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about, and I hope I don't tune you off by starting this way, but I want you to think about having a budget. Now, some people love budgeting and love spreadsheets. I'm a dork like that, and I build all kinds of spreadsheets because I think it's fun to look at the numbers because when I know my numbers, I can come up with a game plan, and that gives me confidence, and that makes me feel like, okay, I actually can change the situation I'm in right now. For me, I started keeping a budget years ago when we were in student loan debt just because that's the only way I knew how to get out of debt. But it's something that I've maintained over the years and I still keep a tight budget for myself every single month. And so how I do it is I look at what do I expect my income to be? What are my expenses gonna be? And what does that leave me with at the end of the month? And I set savings goals for myself. And it's not because I'm trying to like be a ball buster and be super strict with myself. I set my own budget, but I like having a reminder of like, hey, I wanna save X amount of dollars this year so I can, I remember, you know, buy my first car, buy my first house, build a vacation home for my kids and I. I want to start you know teaching my kids about money and so first and foremost like it's okay to set a budget now for me I had to track my numbers every single month for a while before I started to even know what my numbers should be and that's okay like for me it took me like three months and what I do is at the end of the month I download my bank account charges in Excel spreadsheet I'd download any if I had any credit card charges and I would just put those into different categories like gas or babysitters or clothes or home and garden or or insurance or you know the things that aren't that fun but and then miscellaneous and pets and I would take a look at that because that would give me a starting point and it's important that you start a budget now there's all kinds of apps out there that you can use for me my brain like doesn't work when I try to do it in apps but I do that in just a Google spreadsheet and I manually do it, it takes a little bit of time but it keeps me on track and it keeps me just aware of what I'm spending it's really easy if you're anything like me I hate shopping so I order everything online then also I'm like dang I spent a lot on Amazon this month and it's just that month reminder if you said okay this is the goal I want to be in fact oftentimes I'll do a half month check where I'll download my transactions halfway through the month and then I'll say okay where am I at in relation to what I said I wanted to spend this month so if I've already hit 80% of my grocery budget then I'm like okay hold on kids we're eating whatever's in the pantry for the next two weeks so I can stick to the budget now I go over my budget at times and I go under my budget but it's just really important to know especially if you're starting a business this is called a profit and loss statement one of the things that irks me the most about online business owners is is they will say I made X amount of dollars and it's like well that was your revenue what were your expenses in there and you'd be surprised most people don't know their numbers and the people that do know their numbers can grow faster because it allows you just to make decisions on how you want to reinvest back into your company and so understand right there's two ways to start saving more money it's either bring in more money or spend less that's it it's a pretty simple formula so I would start there by just simply track for a while don't shame yourself or anything at the beginning just take a look at your numbers and see where you're at Okay, two kind of goes along with number one, but it's having a system for tracking. And that's something that I do in my business with everything. My team, my employees make fun of me all the time because I have spreadsheets for everything. But if I don't know my numbers, I 
don't necessarily know the next move to make. And so for me, it gives me a lot of confidence knowing that if I don't necessarily, like, as a business owner, you're not always gonna have all the answers. And when I don't know what to do, I just look at the data and I make data-driven decisions and I help my numbers help me decide how to move forward. It's the same thing in your own life. Like let's say you're renting right now and you wanna buy your first home. Well, what does that mean? What does the average house market in your area look like? What kind of down payment do you have to have? Let's say you have to have a $20,000 down payment. Where's your budget at right now? How much can you realistically save each month? And, or can you start bringing in more revenue to increase that number? And then realistic time frame for making that happen. So let's say you need 20 grand for a down payment. If you can save $1,000 a month, that's gonna take 20 months. That's gonna be over a year and a half. And so it's important to like have proper expectations coming into this because otherwise you're gonna be like, dang, this is so far away. It's never gonna happen. And it's easy to just go back into your old habits. But when you kind of have a time frame and you break it down, break down the numbers so you know what, you know, okay, $1,000 a month, what does that mean per week? What does that mean per day? And can you put that into like a tangible way to track that? Like, let's do the math on this. I'm doing this off the top of my head and I'm not, I was not that great at math in school. But $1,000 a month, let's say divided by 30 days. So that's, uh, that's $33 a day. So can you look at ways like, okay, let's say you're spending $9 a day at Starbucks. Okay, that drops that down to $24 a day. Are you doing an online purchase through Amazon or through Target? Are there ways that you can not spend as much so you can start saving that amount? And remind yourself that it's a short-term sacrifice for a long-term game. And so you have to know your numbers, okay? Start building spreadsheets, start making projections and forecasting because that's how you're really gonna know exactly how to grow. Okay, the next money tip, which might not really necessarily feel like a money tip, but it is, is the speed in which you're willing to ask for help directly relates to the speed in which you're willing to grow. And that meant for me, I had, I I didn't know anything about money when I was 18, 19 years old on my own for the first time. And so I just started asking other people who were good at finances, like, how do you do it? What do you do? And maybe even say, can you kind of mentor me on this for a while? Watch some YouTube videos and figure out a system that works for you. Cause not everybody's system is going to work for everybody. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. And then when it came to my business, I, at the beginning was trying to do everything myself. And sometimes you have to, but I started to realize that if I wanted to grow faster, the way to do that was to reinvest back into my business. And that was scary, right? It's scary to reinvest back into your company. But every single year I reinvest a lot of money. In fact, I have a goal for myself. I reinvest 10% of my company profits just back into personal growth for myself because I know that I can't continue learning and growing and being a good leader if I am not working on myself. So I reinvest back into coaching programs and masterminds and training so that way I can learn and keep moving forward. Okay, number four, and this one might be unpopular and not everybody I know is going to agree with me on this, but I'm not a huge fan of debt. And I think that debt can stop you from being brave and making decisions that you would have otherwise made had you not brought on a lot of debt. And I think for me, oftentimes when I have had times in my life where I had a ton of debt. It kind of got me into that scarcity mindset of like, I'm always gonna be in this spot. Nothing's ever gonna change. And so you're gonna hear a lot of people disagree on this, right? They say, no, leverage other people's money. And if you can get a loan over here, that's, 5% interest, but then you can reinvest it over here and get 10% interest. Of course, I know the math, built the spreadsheets, the math on that works. But for me, it's a feeling of safety and security that I want. So that way I can make riskier decisions once I get to that point. So for example, for me, I'm a single mom. And so one of my big goals was to pay off my mortgage. So I had zero debt whatsoever. Now, a lot of financial analysts or other people will look at me and say, Natalie, that's stupid. And I agree, I've done the math on it. I know I have a 2.85% mortgage rate. If I can reinvest back into my company that's growing super fast or if I can put it that somewhere else that's gonna return income I know the power of compound interest but for me it was that safety and that security feeling that I wanted knowing that if something went south my kids home wasn't gonna be taken from them you know we moved a lot when I was a kid and I went to a lot of different schools and I didn't ever want to be in that scenario that my kids would have to go through something similar and I knew that having an excessive amount of debt created a big feeling of fear for me and that I wasn't able to really like make brave decisions if I had that feeling of fear over me. And so, you know, I'm not saying don't ever take on debt. I've obviously taken on debt in my life for a mortgage or things like that. But if you can live at a, at a different lifestyle for a while so you can save up the cash and then purchase the thing, for me specifically, it actually gives me more momentum than taking on a big loan and knowing that I have all these payments that I owe to other people. If something ever went south, I'm not gonna have my stuff taken away from me. I know that one's controversial. Not everybody's gonna agree, but that is what has worked for me consistently. Money lesson number five, I wish I would have learned earlier. Don't wait to save. 
okay? And I'm serious, like when you're young, you're like, oh, I'm in college, I can do whatever I want. Oh, I have little kids and there's everything's expensive. It is expensive, I totally agree. But one of the things that I've found is no matter what age you get to, people just spend the amount of money that they start making. So people will start making more money and then they start spending more money. And so it's like they move up in lifestyle. And so don't wait to start saving, even if that means 50 bucks a month, right? Even if that means $25 a month, it's actually creating a habit that's gonna continue hopefully to grow as you get older. And if you look, if you actually like geek out on numbers like I do, go onto Google and Google, I like the IRS one, but like I do IRS compound cap, com IRS compound interest calculator. And you can plug numbers in and it'll show you how old you are right now, how much you think you can save per month, and then with the power of compound interest, which I usually lowball and say 7%, that's pretty standard if you look like 30 years over time, what that actually looks like because each month that base amount gets bigger and bigger and bigger because you're adding interest to it. It's like a snowball effect. So most people don't even start saving until they're in their 30s. But if you can be diligent and start saving when you're in your 20s, then you don't have to play catch up as long and or you can retire sooner. Like retirement's just a number, right? You don't have to hit a certain age before you can retire. It's just the number you need to live off of forever. I would say don't wait to save. So that leads right into number six, which is to start investing early. You're gonna hear people out there say pick this one stock and this one stock that feels risky to me i am fairly conservative with my investments because for me my business is the thing that is changing all the time i want my other investments to be consistent so unless you like love geeking out and doing your own trades i don't necessarily do that or you can you know use online services that are pretty inexpensive but start investing early and understanding and like watching your money grow like i think it's really fun to see your money grow and you don't have to do anything for it and make sure that you're diversifying your investments into lots of different areas. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, but that's something that I have consistently done over the years. If you're, if you work for a company and they offer a 401k program that they match, take advantage of that 401k. That's free money that all you have to do is set aside a little bit of your paycheck each month. You probably won't even notice that it's getting taken out. And even if that's all you're simply doing right now, see if, if you're self-employed, there's different 401k solo options and things like that that you can do. There's tax programs like Roth IRAs um, or traditional IRAs. There's all kinds of things. Now, I'm not a financial investor. I'm not getting financial advice here, but but those are things that have also given me a feeling of peace when it comes to money. When I start to get stressed about money, I know that I have different retirement accounts in different areas that are there for me if anything were to go south with a business. Okay, this is, a, this is something I kind of gleaned, I guess, from Dave Ramsey, but you wanna have some kind of an emergency fund, okay? Because you never know what's gonna happen. We saw this with COVID. You don't know if you're gonna lose your job. You don't know if the nature of your job is gonna change. You don't know what's gonna happen. And so you wanna have an emergency fund, even if it's just one month. Now, I recommend and having six months, but have an emergency fund. Now that's true with your personal finances, but especially if you're a business owner, okay? Now in our business, we have a lot of expenses. And so what I do is I wanna make sure I have six months of cash flow. So that way, if anything went south in the, our business model right now, I'm not gonna have to lay people off. And that gives me a really good feeling as an employer. It also gives my employees confidence knowing that, hey, my job's not gonna disappear if Natalie's in a tight cash flow situation this month. Now, one little trick that I have is I, <laughs> have multiple accounts because I, I know a lot of people, if they see a big dollar amount in their account, then they're like, get the itch to spend it. So I just keep my regular expenses in one account and then I shift everything else into a separate account that I don't look at every day. I don't know why, maybe this is a scarcity mindset thing, but I like feeling like, you know, I gotta be a little scrappy here. I gotta like pull up my bootstraps, I gotta put in the work. And so that's my technique. I'm, not everybody has to follow that, but that works for me. Money lesson number eight, I wish I would have learned sooner. Be cautious about who you take money advice from. And I think oftentimes you're gonna see this. Majority of people live outside of the level that they probably should be living in because they want to like keep up with the Joneses or give an appearance that they're a lot more successful than they are. Majority of Americans especially have tons of consumer debt. And as the I got older, I started to realize that. I was like, wait a sec, how is so-and-so over here affording a brand new boat or a brand new truck or all these things? And then I would get to know them and I'm like, man, they everything has, has debt, has loans. And so one, be cautious of like the friends that you take money advice from, but also just the people that you look up to online. There are all kinds of people that give all different kinds of advice. And I would say, what are their like priorities, their life priorities, and what kind of track record have they had in the past? If you wanna do some things that are a little riskier with investing or ways that you're making money, things like that, make sure you also have safe stuff too. And you know, it can be hard, especially if you're like grew up like I did where you weren't modeled necessarily how to make money, how to save money. And so 
if you didn't have an example of how to learn that, you're gonna have to teach yourself. And so try to find other people that live a similar lifestyle as you want and take advice from them and model them. Number nine, it's also okay to treat yourself sometimes, right? If you are sticking to the strict budget all the time, eventually you're gonna kind of get burned out or maybe even feel resentful. Like it's okay to treat yourself sometimes or to go a little bit off budget. And I know that kind of sounds opposite to what I was saying earlier, but it's really not. It's kind of like when I was an athlete in college, we would have a rest day every single week because our bodies needed that time off. It's similar to with your mindset. Like if you're grinding, trying to save and stick to a budget or reinvest back into your company, it's not uncommon to feel burned out from doing that. So it's okay to splurge occasionally and like do something that you maybe wouldn't normally do. Now, one thing I do is one of my categories in my budget is trip fund. And so every single month I put into that trip fund. So usually we go on one or two and they're not big family vacations. I'm just, I don't like to travel. I'm such an introvert. I like to just stay at my house. But um, you know, that way, let's say come July, every summer I used to drive cross country with my kids because I love salmon fishing. And so I drive cross country and I'd spend the month in the summer here in Idaho and we I, that was my big vacation for the year. Well, that's a lot of expenses that would incur in that one month of July. And so I tried to save every single month so that way it wasn't like digging into all my savings and I wasn't expecting it. All right, and the final money lesson that I wanna share with you that I wish I would have learned when I was younger, I wish I would have learned this when I was much younger, is don't be afraid to talk to your kids about money. And that includes your spouse too. I wish we would have talked about money a lot more when I was growing up. It would have just helped me understand that like how this works when you become an adult. And I wouldn't have, I hope, I like to think I wouldn't have had as steep of a learning curve. And so with my kids, we do our budget together. So they see how much everything costs. I personally don't do allowance and I'll do another video talking about teaching your kids about money, but we, I give dollar amounts for certain chores. So it's more incentivizing them. I mean, that's like what it's like in the real world, right? Like we're not just handed money you have to work and earn a certain dollar amount for doing certain things and so I'll talk I'll do another video talking about that but don't be afraid to talk to your kids about money you know I, one of the things I found is oftentimes the areas that we have the most shame in are the things that nobody ever talks about and so you don't also want to set your kids up for feeling shameful about talking about money because it was never talked about in your own home and I think you'll be surprised at how much your kids might actually be interested in hearing what you have to say they might not act like it but I found that oftentimes you know, I'll be driving the kids around to their practices or whatever. And I noticed that they'll pose a question that is something that I talked about with budgeting a couple weeks before. And to me, that's a sign that they're thinking about it and they're processing it. And, um, you know, show them what saving looks like. Show them that what clothes that you're buying for them looks like. You know, show them what taxes look like when you're an adult. Talk about a budget. And I think that you'll be surprised that your kids actually will understand a lot more than you probably think that they might. Now, one other thing I will give a little bonus tip. And again, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CPA. I'm not trying to give any kind of accounting or legal advice here, but if you own your own business and your kids are at an age where they can do legitimate things inside the company, you can hire your own kids at a reasonable rate, right? You don't want to just like pay them for not working or pay a crazy rate. But if you can, if they can do legitimate things inside the company, like Phoenix will fill envelopes sometimes, or Lincoln is sometimes my videographer, my 12 year old, right? I'm teaching them right now how to code and how to, I, I bought them a software on how to edit videos. They're not that that great at it yet, but they're learning the process. And so if you have legitimate things that you can hire your kids inside your business, then you can put them on payroll and hire them as W-2 employees. And if they're earning W-2 wages, then you can set them up with a Roth IRA. And if you geek out like I do on compound interest, you're gonna like this. So I did the math on this. And for my daughter, she's eight years old. And if, if you start investing when you're eight versus like 28 or 38, like most people do, it's crazy the amount of money that you'll have by the time you're retirement age, simply because your parents helped you start investing when you're young. So I'm not gonna give legal or specific advice on that. Check with your accountant, check with your, you know an attorney if you're a business owner. So I hope that was helpful for you. Just to recap, set a budget. A budget is not a dirty word. Make sure that you know your numbers and you understand the revenue that you're bringing in and the expenses that you have and what that means your profit or your savings is at the end of the month. Remember that the speed in which you're willing to ask for help or reinvest is the speed in which you're going to grow and see results. Debt can stop you from feeling brave and making decisions that you otherwise might have. Don't wait to save and start investing early. Have an emergency fund. Be cautious about who you take money advice from. Don't be afraid to treat yourself at times. And start talking to your kids at a young age about money. I promise you, they'll thank you for it later. I hope this was helpful. If you guys like this advice, let me know in the comments if you have anything else that you'd like to add or if you disagree with me on any of these, share them in the comments and I will see you guys in the next video.